All of these images were taken with the Skywatcher 10-inch Dobsonian telescope. But why is this instrument so perfect as an introduction to visual astronomy and the night sky? Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the best beginner telescope. When looking online and shopping for telescopes, you'll notice that they're normally, let's keep it simple, put into two different categories, reflectors and refractors. The difference between these two types of telescopes is simple and I'm going to keep it as simple as possible for the purposes of today's video. Refractors use lenses inside to bend light and bring it to a focus point, whereas reflectors use mirrors to do exactly the same thing. In this video, we're going to be talking about the 10-inch Dobsonian from Skywatcher and in this case, it's a reflector telescope, so it uses mirrors inside. The beauty of these types of telescopes are completely manually controlled on a solid base, rather than say the equipment I myself would use for astrophotography, as it allows you to learn your way around the night sky. By using the handles and moving the telescope tube up and down, you're able to manually go to different deep sky objects such as Andromeda and Orion, to name a couple that are actually visible with this scope, or even bigger and brighter objects in the night sky that are easier to find when you're just getting started, such as the moon, which can be super cool to look at up close during events such as lunar eclipses. It's such a valuable and rewarding experience being able to lock onto these objects in the night sky and find them yourself and gain that satisfaction. And you'll thank me for saying this in the future down the line, when you're able to do these sorts of things when your computer controls fail, if you head into the astrophotography route. In order to understand why this telescope is so good at what it does, we need to look at and understand some of the specifications behind the instrument. Don't worry though, it's not going to be complicated and it's not going to be mathsy. Today we're just going to cover the three specifications that are the most important to look at when you're considering purchasing one of these. And they are focal length, aperture and f ratio. Let's start with focal length. So the focal length of a telescope is the distance between the primary mirror, in our case, and the focus point. And the bigger this number, the more the telescope is going to zoom in to different deep sky objects. So for instance, the Skywatcher 10-inch Dobsonian houses a 1,200mm focal length, which is an excellent middle ground for looking at planets such as Jupiter, specifically when they're in opposition, i.e. their closest point to Earth. The next specification is aperture, and aperture is arguably the most important spec that you're going to want to consider when choosing to purchase one of these. Aperture refers to the diameter of the primary lens or mirror, in our case, inside the telescope. So with the Skywatcher, the aperture is 10 inches. A larger aperture means that more light's gonna be hitting the telescope and therefore you're gonna be able to see the objects in greater detail. Aperture is a lot more important to think about with visual astronomy rather than astrophotography as you can easily compensate for a darker image by exposing for longer. But you don't have to worry about this when we're talking about just stargazing in general. The third and final specification that we're going to talk about when looking at this telescope today is F ratio. F ratio refers to how fast the telescope captures light. So the lower the number, the faster it is, and the larger the number, the slower it is. The F ratio of a telescope can be calculated by dividing the focal length by the aperture. And the larger this number, the bigger the telescope's going to be. So this is something to take into account with storage, transportation and portability. The reason I've left this factor last is it is not nearly as important for visual astronomy in determining what scope you're going to want to use as the other two. This is because if you had a couple of telescopes with the same diameter but a different F ratio, you could easily put in different lenses to even out the magnification between them and the field of view would look pretty much the same. So taking all three of these specifications into account, how do you actually know how far you're going to be able to zoom in with your telescope before buying it? This is luckily a really easy calculation. You're going to want to take the focal length of your telescope, so in our case 1200 millimeters 
and divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece that you're using at that given moment in time. So let's say we're going to be using the 10 inch daub with a 20 millimeter eyepiece and we want to figure out how far that's going to zoom us in. So we want to take the focal length of the daub, which is 1,200 millimeters, and divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece, which will be 20 millimeters, which will give us a result of 60, which means the object that we're seeing with this set equipment is gonna appear 60 times bigger in our field of view. All of these specifications can be quite a lot to take in. And with these complex concepts, and as a high school student, I always find that putting theory into practice and principles into practice that I've learned can go a long way in helping me to understand something. Therefore, I'm so excited to say that today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is a fun, engaging and interactive online website that allows you to immerse yourself in fully hands-on practical lessons in an infinite number of your favourite STEM subjects. No matter your understanding, Brilliant offers a wide range of courses for any knowledge level to make complex topics so much more accessible through visual learning and learning by doing. Through taking some of Brilliant's courses in problem solving, it has allowed me to subconsciously improve my critical thinking abilities, which is something that us astrophotographers have to be really good at when out on the field so that we don't waste a precious clear night. Brilliant are so relevant to the channel and what I'm teaching you guys. So if you feel like this is something that would interest you, head on over to the link in my bio and get started for free. The first 200 people to click the link and sign up get 20% off an annual premium membership. Thank you so much again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Moving away from specifications now, the one thing I love about the Skywatcher 10 inch is the amount of stuff it comes with to get you started out on the field stargazing. Alone, the telescope comes with a 10 and 25 millimeter eyepiece set, which gives you an 120 millimeter magnification just in the box. While these are great, there's a couple of extra accessories that are relatively inexpensive that could go a long way in improving the potential of this scope. The first one is a Barlow lens. And a Barlow lens can range anywhere up from two times. And basically what it does is it increases the magnification of the lenses that you already have. So for example, a two times Barlow lens would increase the magnification of any given lens that you have by two times as much. This is especially cool for getting up close to the craters on the moon or even the core of the Orion Nebula, which would normally be blown out in any astrophotographer's exposure. The second accessory that I'd recommend you guys purchase with the telescope is any lens from the Celestron XL LX series. Now, I used one of these lenses to observe Jupiter's opposition a couple of years back, and the views from it were absolutely stunning. The glass is such high quality and the views were really clear. I could see Jupiter along with its four closest moons, Io, Ganymede, Callisto and Europa. An absolutely unforgettable experience which I couldn't have done without this lens. So any lens in that series, I highly recommend for beginners to get that excitement going. Within astrophotography, astrophotographers use equatorial mounts to compensate for the rotation of the Earth and the movement of the stars. So we don't have to worry about following the objects in our field of view in the night sky. However, one big consideration to make is the higher the magnification of your telescope, so the bigger the focal length and the bigger the magnification of the eyepiece is, the further zoomed in you're going to be, yes, and the better detail you're going to receive, yes, but the faster the object is going to drift through your field of view. Luckily, with a structure like the 10 inch Dobsonian, you can use the two handles to glide across the night sky and keep within the same point. You're just gonna want to keep a tight grip on the handles and gently move the telescope left or right, depending on where you're wanting to go to follow the object in the night sky. This is one thing that I did love about the 10 inch Dobsonian. It's very robust and it's very secure. So when you're moving about and you're moving about between objects, the shake is definitely minimized. 
The last thing that I want to cover is taking pictures with these sorts of telescopes. And a really common question that I get asked quite a lot is, can I take photos with this telescope? Can I take photos with that telescope? And the answer is normally yes, to an extent. So with astrophotography equipment, in contrast with an equatorial mount truck in the night sky, you're able to take longer exposures and expose for more detail. This equipment was designed and made for taking images of the night sky, whereas something like the Skywatcher 10 inch definitely wasn't. But it doesn't make it impossible. Objects such as the moon are really great to take pictures of, even with something like a smartphone. All you need to do is align the front lens of your smartphone front facing camera to the eyepiece on the telescope until it comes into the frame on your camera screen on your phone. This can be quite fiddly and the slightest movement can move the object such as the moon that you're looking at out of your field of view. However, with a little bit of time and patience and getting used to the telescope and getting a feel for where the object is in the night sky, you'll be able to capture it on your mobile phone. So in this video, we've covered why the 10 inch is perfect for observational astronomy, what specifications you need to look out for in telescopes when you're purchasing them and why they're relevant to the telescope that I'm speaking about today. We've spoken about different calculations that you can make to get a rough idea of how far in your equipment's going to be able to see, as well as accessories that come with a telescope and additional accessories that I'd recommend you guys look into if you're interested in purchasing it down below in the description. And finally, taking images with non-go-to telescope structures. There's so much more to cover when it comes to these types of things, so I'm definitely going to do a few more videos down the line on the same topic. But I really hope that this has given those of you that are interested in purchasing a telescope a kickstart and what to look out for. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video and I really hope you found it helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, clear skies.